This is News 4 New York with Chuck Scarborough and Sue Simmons. Good evening. The Mets even the World Series will have team coverage of their incredible comeback in Boston. But first, we have a grim development in a tragedy that struck us here at NBC today, a tragedy heard by millions. WNBC traffic reporter Jane Dornacker has been pronounced dead. Her pilot remains in critical condition tonight. Their helicopter crashed into the Hudson River late this afternoon. Jane was broadcasting a radio traffic report at the time, and millions heard her final terrified words as the helicopter hit. It was her second crash in six months. Both helicopters were flown by the same company, a company that had been grounded. John Miller begins our coverage. The helicopter was pulled from the murky waters of the Hudson River tonight. Now, National Transportation Safety Board investigators will begin their work. It began at 4.45. Pilot William Pate was at the controls. Traffic reporter Jane Dornacker was at his side doing a live traffic report. She didn't seem to know what was happening until it was too late. Heading to New Jersey, the outbound Lincoln Tunnel looks a lot better for you in New Jersey. Get the water, get the water, get the water! The helicopter cut through an eight-foot chain-link fence and dropped into the water. Paul Hoshagen was the first fire department diver on the scene. I found one man strapped in his seat. I took his seatbelt off, brought him right to the surface, then dove down for a second time and found a lady. She wasn't strapped in the seat, but she was pinned in a helicopter. Paramedics worked feverishly to revive Dornacker and Pate on the scene. Both had been trapped underwater for several minutes. Dornacker was taken to St. Vincent's Hospital, where an emergency trauma team continued to try and revive her. Pate was taken to Bellevue. Hi, I'm Jane Dornacker, traffic reporter for WNBC. Dornacker was a familiar voice to commuters with her traffic reports, and this was her second crash. The first one was in April, when her chopper went down in the Hackensack River near Richfield Park, New Jersey. Tonight at St. Vincent's Hospital, concerned colleagues of Dornacker showed up to learn what they could. Everyone at, at WNBC is shocked and uh, very saddened by Jane's death. And uh, I, I think that we would want to remember her as a very enthusiastic and talented person. She was uh, a very talented performer and, uh, and a good friend. National Transportation Safety Board investigators took a preliminary look at the chopper tonight. Tomorrow, their engineers and investigators will begin the long job of reviewing the craft's maintenance records and looking for what went wrong over Manhattan today. John Miller, News 4, Manhattan. Dornacher was 40 years old. In the past, she has worked as a comedian, a musician, and a reporter, and she is survived by a daughter. Just how safe was the helicopter that crashed into the Hudson today? Well, the company that owned the choppers had problems in the past, problems that caught the attention of the FAA. News 4's Tony Gaida has more. For Spectrum Helicopters, tonight's crash was its third in six months. On June 25th, the Spectrum chopper trying to land at West 30th Street went into the Hudson River, but the botched landing caused no injuries. On April 18th, the Spectrum helicopter with Jane Dornacker on board plunged 25 feet into the Hackensack River off Ridgefield Park, New Jersey. Dornacker was not injured. The runners hit the water and it just went in on my side. And the next thing I knew, I was underwater and I couldn't get my seatbelt undone, so it was kind of scary. In addition to the crashes, the company has had problems with federal regulators. The Federal Aviation Administration grounded Spectrum helicopters in March of 1985, officially for a period of 45 days. The FAA cited the company for 13 violations of federal regulations. The FAA said Spectrum operated aircraft recklessly, that the company used an improperly licensed pilot, that Spectrum used pilots without their having passed annual flight checks, and that the company operated an aircraft without its annual inspection. No Spectrum officials were available tonight for comment, but the company was required to correct those violations before being allowed to resume operations. WNBC Radio stopped flying with Spectrum after the April crash and hired an independent consultant to review its operation. His report indicated that uh, Spectrum's maintenance and, and safety conditions were up to par. And at that point, we made the judgment that uh, we should continue to fly. Donna Fiducia was WNBC's traffic reporter in 1984 when a Spectrum chopper had to make an emergency landing in Queens. Tonight she told me how she felt about the Enstrom helicopters the company flies. An Enstrom is, it's just a touchy machine. It's almost like a sports car, something that you have to 
keep after a lot and it takes a lot of maintenance and they will tend to have problems. There are experts, pilots and mechanics who agree with Fiducia. There are others who do not. But WNBC General Manager Hayes said tonight he is sure that ship was safe. And he told Dornacker that when she asked him this summer if it was safe to go back in the air. Chuck, Sue. Tony, thank you. Former Yankee Joe Pepitone tonight faces six months in jail on drug charges. And the sentencing judge chastised the one-time baseball hero for disgracing the uniform he once wore. Pepitone was convicted last month of two misdemeanors, possessing drug paraphernalia and having a bag of 300 quaaludes. At today's sentencing, Judge Richard Brown berated Pepitone. You were once a first-rate baseball player, said the judge. And now you stand before a court, a second-rate drug operator. And the judge went on. You were a Bronx bomber. Now you're a Brooklyn criminal. Later today, another court granted Pepitone a temporary stay of his jail sentence, pending an appeal of his conviction. The amazing Mets continued their comeback at Fenway Park tonight. They have now tied up the series with the Red Sox. Two games apiece. Len Berman is here now with a look at tonight's action. Len? Okay, thank you, Sue. The World Series is coming back to Shea. Game six Saturday night after game five tomorrow. But don't be that ecstatic if you're a Mets fan. The home team has lost all four games thus far. So after looking out of it through two games, the Mets are all even now through four. Fourth inning, Gary Carter got the Mets going. Nails a two-run homer over the left field wall before the inning's over. The Mets got three off Al Nipper. Two homers for Carter tonight. And defensively, Mookie Wilson has never played caroms off the wall in Fenway. Yet, look at this. Bounce throw, he nails Gedman going for a double in the sixth. Top of the seventh inning, it's that man again, Lenny Dykstra, deep to right field. Watch White Evans near the bullpen wall, and he gloves it over. That counts as a two-run homer. Five-nothing for Ron Darling, 6-2 the final. Not only has the home team lost all four, they've never led in any of the games. Only twice in World Series history did the home team lose the first four games. 1906, both teams were from Chicago. 1923, both teams were from New York. So this year is a real World Series curiosity thus far. I'll have more later on. Len, thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Len. In Boston tonight, obviously, the hometown crowd turned out in force, hoping last night's spectacular Mets win was only a fluke. Well, instead, they saw their team conquered again, but they are not giving up hope. Mike Taibbi reports from Fenway. Sox fans wore their grim October game faces to Fenway tonight, and it wasn't just because of last night's desultory loss in Game 3. It is because of their history with the Red Sox of dependable, nearly majestic disappointment. 68 years of often fine teams, and always the bitter bridesmaids bouquet in the end. The true Sox fan, the fan born or persuaded to his tragic romance, knows that, and after game three was willing to speak the truth. Well, we didn't expect much out of them this year when they started, you know? It sounds like you're making an excuse already. I mean, what no. happens if they do lose? Or? If they lose, we're used to that, too. <laughs> we see it in 78, <laughs> 75, 60, uh, 67. It's a mystique. There's more of an aura about it's the Red Sox, Fenway Park. It's not like just one player, this player, a great team here. It's sort of a whole, it's a whole. I think they love the whole scene. And if they lost, it probably wouldn't detract from that mystique, would it? I don't think so. Tonight, a night reminiscent of so many October evenings when the chills settled in, they packed their jewel of a band box to see if the script would change. The Sox pushed men into scoring position in each of the first two innings before the Mets onslaught, but they died there. Would the dream die here? But in the second inning, something else happened that perhaps says more about this team, these fans, and their city than anything else. Failing again, seeming to approach the ultimate failure again, a small column of balloons wafted across the fence green canvas, carrying a message. The fans cheered. Met shortstop Rafael Santana had to make a play on it, but the point was made. In New York on Sunday, someone threw a golf ball at Jim Rice as he settled under a fly ball. Here it was a love note, suspended by helium balloons, a message that hoped to urge on the improbable, but that would settle as it always has, for nothing more than more of this. In Boston, Mike Taibbi, News 4 New York. And we'll have more World Series coverage and lots more news straight ahead. The 21 Still ahead on News 4 tonight, inmates with AIDS. David Diaz has an exclusive report from Rikers, where stricken prisoners have gone on a hunger strike. The tax reform bill becomes law as the president puts his pen to hand. And more from Fenway, Sal Marciano with some of the key players in game number four. When News for New York continues in a moment. Tonight, News for New York is sponsored by Hyundai.
Now, 30 seconds of common sense. Should you buy a new car or throw more money into the old heap? Well, you can get a brand new Hyundai XL thoroughly equipped for $49.95. Or you can keep throwing good money after bad. I suggest that you rush to your Hyundai dealer if your car will start. For your nearest local Hyundai dealer, call this toll-free number today. We make cars that make sense. So hurry. Hi. My name's David Byrne, and I made a movie about a bunch of people in Virgil, Texas. <laughs> but this place is completely normal. Anyway. True Stories, rated PG. Now playing at the Sutton in Manhattan. Starts Friday, October 24th at Select Theater. A tradition, maybe, you could say. Taking the sh Eastern Shuttle is a tradition. With me, anyway. Now there's something even better on the new Eastern Air Shuttle Plus. I was surprised to have uh, bagel and cream cheese and orange juice. So there's only one thing I didn't like, and that was you had to hustle for a seat. And now you get that little number on your... You get the seat assignment, it's just lovely. I was satisfied with it. I think I'll be more satisfied with it now. The new Eastern Air Shuttle Plus. I deserve the best. And that's the way the new Eastern Shuttle is. Z100 Zookeeper Scott Shannon. These nice men want to show you something very exciting. That's $20,000, and you can win it this Thursday morning. How? Put your radio on Z100. 100.3 FM. Listen Thursday morning at 720. We'll announce the birthday in this envelope. If it matches yours, you can win all this. Heard me. Z100. More music, more fun, and more free money. Do you want to win $20,000 tomorrow morning at 720? Then put your radio on Z100 tonight. At Meineke Discount Mufflers... I'm not gonna pay a lot for this muffler! You're not gonna pay a lot, because Meineke's muffler prices range from $18.93 to $26.95 installed. A new warning tonight on the danger of AIDS spreading among heterosexuals. Surgeon General C. Everett Koop urged men and women to avoid what he called freewheeling casual sex to prevent the deadly disease. And he recommended beginning sex education for children in the third grade. In another development, a group of prisoners with AIDS at Rikers Island continue their hunger strike to protest medical care at the jail. David Diaz has an exclusive report from inside the prison. The 21 prisoners with AIDS who are kept on the third floor of the Rikers Island infirmary had told prison officials they would not discuss the grievances behind their food and medication strike unless they got a chance to talk to News 4 first. Their main complaints had to do with an alleged lack of proper medication, inadequate medical treatment, and discrimination because of their disease. Prescribed medications that are given to people that are sent to the hospital that are very ill, sent to Bellevue, Kings County, they get prescriptions for medication. We come back here, we don't get them. They claim they don't have the drugs available. They don't have them. This is reality. Death is reality. Pain is reality. And they don't see it this way. I know that they're only following instructions from those who have, you know, an authority over them, the doctors or what have you, or alleged doctors. But they have to have, take, uh, they have to have the guts to take the steps, man. If a man is in trouble on the spot, take the steps, man, and run the risk. The first and main issue, it seems to me, that they're raising is the question of them not getting the medications that they are supposed to be getting, uh, that they've been prescribed by other hospitals they've been taken to or that they require because of their condition. Uh, this is the first time that I've heard that statement. The prisoners said they had brought these problems to the attention of authorities in a piecemeal fashion for some time, but that conditions had not improved. I asked the prisoners whether they were forgetting they were in a prison, not just being patients in a hospital. I belong in jail, but I didn't do anything for which I deserve to die in jail. Okay, that's the bottom line. As of the time we left Rikers Island, the prisoners were meeting with prison officials. What will come of that meeting remains to be seen, but clearly the prisoners believe that simply by bringing public attention to what they call their needs will somehow expedite action on them. I'm David Diaz, News 4, Rikers Island. A city official said the hunger strike, though in its second day, did not pose any immediate danger to the prisoners. Tonight, New York Governor Mario Cuomo has dropped his demands for disclosure, and he has agreed to debate his Republican challenger, Andrew O'Rourke. Cuomo wanted tax returns and a list of O'Rourke's law clients. O'Rourke did release his returns, and Cuomo agreed to debate. The two will square off on October 30th and again on November 1st. All four gubernatorial candidates have been invited to appear on News Forum here. O'Rourke, the Right to Life candidate Dennis Dillon, and New Alliance candidate Leona Fulani 
have agreed to, but the governor, and they have accepted, but the governor has yet to reply to our invitation. Sue? Tonight, President Reagan's historic tax reform bill is the law of the land. In ceremonies on the White House lawn, a triumphant president put his signature to the measure. He hailed it as being less a reform than a revolution and tied it to a top interest of the day. I feel like we've just played the World Series of tax reform, and the American people won. The new law will cut taxes by an average of 6% for most Americans and raise taxes on corporations by $12 billion over the next five years. And up next as we continue, the Mets are coming back to New York. The series comes back home. Len Berman will be back with more highlights and Sal Marciano talks to some of the players. Just when you need it most, Toyota introduces a roomy new kind of getaway car, the versatile new Toyota Corolla FX16. The all-new FX16 slips through traffic that snarls other cars. 16-valve quick, tires that stick, four-wheel disc equipped. The gutsy new Toyota FX16. What a way to get away from it all. Who could ask for anything more? American Advantage members who fly the new Pan Am shuttle can accrue mileage in American's Advantage program and earn a free trip to Europe. Advantage members who fly Eastern won't. Now you don't have to worry about missing the Eastern shuttle because the new Pan Am shuttle leaves on the half hour. And once you've flown the new Pan Am shuttle, we don't think you'll miss the Eastern shuttle. The Pan Am shuttle, the first choice in shuttles. This is my, I just had a baby coat. There are millions of reasons to own a fur coat. Here's my I'm turning 40 coat. Well, in five years. How do you like my, I lost 15 pounds coat. There are millions of reasons, and Antonovich has thousands of furs at exceptional prices for each and every one of them. I love my, I finally threw them out, the bum coat. Antonovich, thousands of furs for all of life's big moments. May I help you? Name's Kiefer. I reserved a car for the day. A Firebird. It's ready and waiting, Mr. Kiefer. Your ordinary everyday car rental doesn't have to be an ordinary everyday car. Not when National Car Rental rents exciting cars like the Pontiac Firebird at surprisingly low rates. Driving one could give your whole day a lift. Hello, Kiefer. How was your ride in from the airport? It was a blast. Rent some excitement. Call National at 800 Car Rent. Finally, a radio station I can call my own. Soft Rock 105 FM. WNSR, the new Soft Rock 105 FM. Soft Rock, less talk. You won. Nice countdown, sir. Thank you. Anyway, no matter what happens tomorrow in Boston, the Mets are heading back to Shea Stadium to wrap up the World Series one way or another. And you're a happy guy. I'm a happy kind of guy. I sure am. So is Len. All right. The Mets have come back from two games down to tie it up, so those tickets you have for game six at Shea Stadium are good, Al. Don't throw them away. Okay. Six to two the final tonight. Ron Darling finally gets a win. If you take away game two, the Red Sox have just three earned runs in the other three games. Good Mets pitching in the first. Darling works out of the bases loaded jam. Got Dwight Evans on the force out. And Rafael Santana, fine grab here in the first. The first balloon put out in World Series history. We looked it up. Good play by Hernandez in the fourth. The pitch out just threw the bat at the ball. Backman is able to get to second base. They throw Hernandez out. But good batsmanship because the next guy up, Gary Carter, and he drills it off Al Nipper. Presto, 2 0 Mets. They got three in the fourth inning. Then the catchers got greedy. Top of the sixth inning, Ray Knight's line drive, and Carter tries to tag and score. Forget it. Jim Rice throws him out. Bottom of the sixth inning now. Red Sox catcher Rich Gedman lines it off the wall, and Mookie thinks he's Kari Yastrzemski in left field. On a bounce, and he nails Gedman trying for a double. Top of the seventh inning, Lenny Dykstra strikes again deep to right field. And Dwight Evans out there is a fabulous right fielder. He tips it over for a two-run homer. Five-nothing Mets. And in the eighth inning, a monster shot for Carter, a second homer over everything into Lansdowne Street. Six-nothing. 6-2 Six the final. Two homers and three RBIs for Carter. He had three last night. So right now, the uh, Mets MVPs for the World Series are Darling, Dykstra, and Carter. We have Sal Marciano at Fenway. We hope to get to him before the end of the broadcast. 
Now, game five tomorrow night, some rain is in the Boston forecast. Dwight Gooden will go on only three days rest. He's only done that once in his career. Gooden said he wasn't concerned because he only went five innings in his game two loss. Bruce Hurst, the game one winner, pitches for Boston. What does he think? We don't know. He dodged reporters today. In hockey, the Rangers finally won a regular season overtime game. Five to four over the Kings at the Garden. The Rangers had gone 24 straight overtimes without a win. Less than seven minutes left on the slap shot. Shell Samuelson scored it. It was 4-4 after regulation. Then the big play. Late in overtime, Mark Hardy mugs Kelly Miller, and the officials did call the penalty. So 26 seconds left. The rebound, watch the left side in front. Mark Osborne pokes it home. That breaks the streak dating back to January of 85. And who was the World Series MVP in 1983? Right, catcher Rick Dempsey of Baltimore. He was cut today. Famous fleeting. That's sports for now. We hope to go to Sal shortly. Back to you. And we're going to Lynn. Yes, we are. Right after the commercial, we'll be back with uh, Sal at Fenway with Ron Darling. Stay tuned. The Mercedes-Benz Driving Simulator, a laboratory that moves. Computerized hydraulics producing realistic driving forces. Computerized projectors creating a lifelike driving world. Allowing engineers to analyze the responses of ordinary drivers in extraordinary moments. Duplicating any driving situation in total safety. Mercedes-Benz continues to learn the secrets of automotive science. And the automotive world continues to learn from Mercedes-Benz. Tonight, the Sports Report is sponsored by Mercedes-Benz. Hawaii. I dream. Hawaii. Take me there. American Airlines Hawaii. Eight days, seven nights for only $559, hotel and airfare included. Americans Hawaii. Take me there. Something special in the air. The pessimist sees the glass as half empty. The optimist sees the glass as half full. We, however, see it as a way to quench a thirst, boil an egg, or make something grow. Seeing the possibilities is capitalism at its best, and why you'll never look at a glass of water quite the same again. Shearson Lehman Brothers. Minds over money. This liquid can help keep your engine running cool, prevent corrosion, keep it from boiling over or freezing up. What's in it? Alugard, a premium quality antifreeze formula approved by all four major U.S. car makers. Alugard, a formula you find in more than 70 brands of antifreeze, but not in Prestone. The label tells you it's car maker approved antifreeze. Antifreeze with Alugard. Available now. The Falls Fest at savings of 20 to 50%. Now at all Macy's in New York, Connecticut, and New Jersey, where Bamberger's is now Macy's. And moments ago, Sal Marciano talked to Ron Darling in Fenway. Thanks, Let's go Glenn. to Sal. Boyhood dreams do come true. 11 years ago, you were out there in center field. Tonight, you pitch a shutout ball over seven, allowing only four hits. You know, they did. I think uh, they almost came back to haunt me, though, because I was trying almost as hard as I've ever tried out there, and I, I think that hurt me a little bit with all the walks and stuff. But um, luckily, I made the pitches when the guys were on base that I had to. They talked about sweeping the Mets, and now it's a best of three. I like it because, you know, they had a lot of talk over there that they were going to try to um, just shut us down here and win two out of three in Boston to send us home. But uh, this team has too much character, and now I think uh, the tide has turned. But uh, we can't gloat over our win. we got to win tomorrow. And if we win tomorrow, then I I'd like to see us go back to Shea and win it. Congratulations in your old home ballpark. Thank you, Sal. Okay, back to you, Glenn. Okay, if the series goes seven games, Ron Darling would pitch the seventh game at Shea. You know, one thing we've neglected is the Roker factor in all of this. <laughs> he is, well, I mean, he said this kind of weather is the kind of weather the Mets win in, and he's been right two out of two. All right, so let's we, pay attention to the Roker factor right we now. We certainly need to. Uh, well, we could have a problem tomorrow because we're talking about some rain for Boston. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be rain delays, and you could be watching us tomorrow at about uh, 4 in the morning. So <laughs> let's take a look at our weather video. Ralph Patterson and Lou Fallon getting this for us. Our high for the day got up to 70, the low back down to 54, and we've got a temperature currently of 
59 degrees. As we check our satellite picture, you see that we do have clear skies still here over the northeast, but this area of cloudiness back up to the west is what we are worried about. There is a weak frontal system up there. High pressure, though, off the eastern seaboard has been providing us with nice weather. Winds coming up out of the south, so a mild night tonight. Temperatures will fall back only into the 40s to around the low 50s. Then during the day tomorrow, this frontal system will be dragged across our area by low pressure. That will bring an increase in cloudiness tomorrow, so we look for thickening clouds. Temperatures, though, getting up to about 70 degrees. Behind it, though, cooler air will move in, so showers late tomorrow night on through Friday, but then by the time we get on into Saturday, when the Mets come back to Shea, we'll have clear skies, but it will be very, very chilly indeed. So our forecast shapes up like this for you. For tonight, we are going to call for clear skies, patchy fog forming toward morning. Temperatures back upper 30s to the low to mid 40s north and west, the low 50s everywhere else. Tomorrow morning, we expect partly sunny skies again, some pesky fog around. Temperatures in the upper 40s to the mid to upper 50s. The rest of the day tomorrow, thickening clouds, but mild, mid 60s to about 70 degrees. Tomorrow night, clouds and showers developing. Temperatures back 40s to about 50. And as far as the World Series weather tomorrow in Boston, game time about 48 degrees with the threat of some showers, so there could be some rain delays involved. And as far as the five days ahead are concerned, we get rather cool as we get on into the weekend. Friday, look for the showers to develop, finally ending by morning and uh, 63 degrees for the high. Saturday, only a high of 60 under clear skies by Saturday night. Temperatures could be in the low 40s. Sunday and Monday sunshine, temperatures in the low 60s. So forget about the Roker factor, the rain factor. That's what we're going to have to worry about now. All right, Al. <laughs> Len, a starting rotation pitcher for the Messes, the forgotten man, Sid Fernandez. That's What's right. the story? Well, Davey Johnson didn't want another lefty in Fenway. Also, he was upset with his weight earlier in the year, so maybe he ate his way out of the World Series. <laughs> I see. <laughs> of course, Sid. That's a heck of a note to end on, isn't yes, it, Sue? Well, yeah. that'll happen. <laughs> Get a little bit of rest, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Hope I don't eat myself out of News 4. Good night. <laughs> First things first. Soul Garb Vitamin Supplements. This could be the fall you fall for Eastern Airlines Caribbean. Prices have dropped. The crowds have disappeared. So there's no better time to fall for our 18 destinations throughout the Caribbean and the Bahamas. Eastern San Juan, for example, is just $268 per person, complete with hotel and round-trip coach airfare. Call your travel agent or Eastern for complete details. Love may last forever, but our fall prices won't. Japanese car makers aren't very happy with Volkswagen. They've discovered Volkswagens have an unlimited mileage, two-year limited warranty. Honda, Nissan, and Toyota can't match that. Makes you wonder. And uh, to add insult to injury, they took a look at our price. See how much you can save at your Volkswagen dealer. Who could yen for anything more? Volkswagen. 87 Volkswagens are here. This has been a presentation of News 4, New York. Senator Al D'Amato is fighting for New York and getting it done. Senator D'Amato fought for state and local tax...